Hey there folks, Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to present our video on touring Pike Place Market in Seattle, Washington. Pike Place Market and the harbor front next door are two of the most popular attractions in Seattle. And in this video, we'll take you through our tour of Pike Place and give you the best tips on things to see, do, and eat during a half day visit. All right, babe, where are we at today? Okay, we're at Pike Place Market in downtown Seattle. And we're going to go check this place out. What are you going to do here? I'm going to go get some donuts right now. Anything else? Go check out the flowers and the market and the cool place to hang out. Are they famous for anything? Uh, a throw in fish. So we're going to go check that out as well. Oh, anything else? Uh, um, coffee. Coffee, yeah. Very famous coffee. Let's start off with a few words on the background of the market. Pike Place was first established back in 1907 in response to a particularly nasty instance of middlemen jacking up the price of local fish and produce. In response, the city council approved a space where consumers could meet the producer, and Pike Place Market was born. From these humble beginnings, the market proved to be such a success that today it covers over five city blocks and nine acres and in some places it's five stories tall. Beginning with basic fish and vegetables, today the market offers much more, such as fresh flower vendors, butchers, bakers, local artists, and an eclectic mix of knick-knack shops and a few oddities, like the famous fish throwing and gum alley. Some call the market a tourist trap, but if you know where to go and what to see, you can find your own special memories and unique experiences. We'll show you ours in this video. Okay, let's go. The main entrance to the market is located in downtown Seattle at First Ave and Pike Street, and we recommend you start your visit from there. Seeing all the areas and sites we'll show you in this video will take you about three to five hours, so you can easily complete this tour in a half day visit. As you enter the main entrance, you'll first come to two of the most famous attractions in the market, the Pike Place Pig and the famous Fish Throwing. The pig is a bronze statue which is actually a large piggy bank where you can make donations of loose change to a good cause. And they say if you make a donation and rub the pig's nose, you'll be blessed with good luck. Pro tip, the pig is a female and her name is Rachel. Right behind the pig is the famous Pike Place Fish Company and their flying fish. If you wait around long enough, you're gonna see some fish throwing. Sometimes, if you hit them just right, they'll even give out fish jerky samples. That was pretty cool. This is uh, salmon jerky. Okay, here we go. Very delicious. Actually, that's pretty good. From this area, move to your right down a long primary hall, which contains a multitude of flower vendors, fish dealers, butchers, and more. The Scottsdale Travel Chick really loved this area, and I lost track of her several times. So what's down here, babe? Uh, this is all the flowers that they have for sale, and just great deals, like ten to twenty dollars on the beautiful flat bunch of flowers. So check the seafood out. market. They have steak here, uh, coffee? vegetables, coffee, yeah, and donuts. And donuts. We're gonna hit that soon. Okay. Ten dollars a bunch. To your left, about halfway down this hall, there's a free observation deck where you can walk out, take a break, and take in some beautiful views over the harbor. Oh, 
So here, instead of locks, they have all these engraved things all around here. On the back side is also another small hall of craft vendors and a little surprise, the second Pike Place Pig. This one's called Billy. Okay, this is known as Billy the Pig. And it just doesn't get enough attention. And these are also like piggy banks that you can donate back here. Put a few bucks in here. After you've explored this second smaller outdoor hall, come back up to the first hall and finish it out. You'll end at a small park called Steinbrook Park. It's a small park with a couple of totem poles and a central sculpture named after Victor Steinbrook, who was instrumental in saving the market from demolition back in the 1960s. You'll see people relaxing and eating their lunch, and maybe a few bums too, honestly. From the park, turn to your right and make your way back up Pike Place Street to sample some of the famous takeout shops along the way. There are quite a few places to check out and some inside the building, so don't be afraid to explore. Everything is open to visitors. You are sure to find your own favorites, but here are four places which have become somewhat famous in the market over the years. First up, you'll come to the very first Starbucks store. Prepare to stand in line though if you want to get a coffee. And there's a little known secret about this Starbucks. It's the first Starbucks, and it isn't. The location you see today, with its own unique sign by the way, and almost always a long waiting line outside, is the first retail location for Starbucks. So you can definitely say it's the first store. But there's a whole other secret story about Starbucks actually beginning as a wholesaler with an earlier store nearby. Anyway, everyone thinks this is the original, so just go with it. Next up is Poroshki Poroshki. It's a very popular place that sells mainly Poroshkis, which are Russian pastries filled with many different types of ingredients, such as cheese or potatoes or salmon. They have over 20 varieties, so pick a couple options and give them a try. What are you in line for, Ben? Okay, this place um, sells, I mean, is it Poroshki, I think? Anyway, it's a pastry, and then you open up, and it has you have meat, veggies, or something <laughs> sweet inside. Yeah. So we're gonna go check. I prefer the ones like that because I'm not a big sweet tooth, so I kind of like to put the ones more. Yeah. The more one of the most popular sweet ones is apple cinnamon, cinnamon grape, and the chocolate hazelnut. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hmm, where else are you going to find a weird accordion player in a cat costume? Lastly, we'd also recommend you check out the Donut Company. It's not really on Pike Street, but just across the road at the end. It's a must to check out, and it takes you to another part of Pike Place Market worth exploring. And, after all, who doesn't like fresh mini donuts made right before their eyes? This is also a pretty famous donut place. A little bit of a line. We're going to try some donut holes. Okay. Here we have fresh mini donuts. This machine makes them. Box them down there. Deep fries them. Rolls them up there. And they either coat them with sugar or honey or sprinkles. And then we buy them right there. Pro tip, do either their cinnamon or sugar donuts as they are the freshest coming right out of the deep fryer. What'd you get? We got sprinkles and maple and cinnamon. This is cinnamon and sugar that is warm and it melts in your Is that your favorite? <laughs> Now, after you've knocked off a few donuts, turn around and head 20 yards back towards the fish company. You'll see an unassuming stairway to your left with some signs like these. You're going to take these stairs down to another famous market attraction, which you're either going to think is pretty cool or pretty disgusting. Just a quick shout out here that if you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel to receive more informative travel videos just like this one. It really helps. There are a couple of rumors on how it all began decades ago, but let's just say it's turned into a tourist attraction today and everybody has to come and get some pictures of the gum wall. All right, so is this super cool or super disgusting? Yeah, if you were to, what, which would be your? Gum after gum after gum, layers of gum. Further down the alley is also Seattle's Selfie Museum. It's a tad pricey for what you get, but if you are into those things, it's a pretty cool place to get some pretty cool pictures. Once you've done the alley, come back up and re-enter the building. And now explore the lower levels where there are a multitude of knick-knack and oddity shops. Each one is actually worth a stop, so do take your time. you've explored all you want of these lower levels, we would now recommend you try one of the dining options inside the main market building. There are a few to choose, but we'd recommend these three for you to think about. Soundview Cafe, which is actually where we ate, it's a small place that calls itself a market fresh family diner, where you order at the cash register and then grab a seat. We had their bread bowl and it was delicious. They also have a soup and salad bar, which is quite popular want something a little more fancier, but not much, consider Lowell's. 
It has three floors of waterfront dining offering breakfast through dinner. The place actually has both self-serve on two floors and a nicer table service option on the middle floor. One more place worth considering is Athenian, in business since 1909. They not only serve seafood, but other comfort foods like burgers, pancakes, etc. And they have a two-story kind of atrium place like this, which is pretty cool. The final area we'd recommend you explore is Post Alley. It's a small alley just up from the main Pike Place Street. It has a number of drinking and dining establishments which are worth checking out and certainly coming back during the evening. I'll cover just a few here and very quickly. Starting from the north side of Virginia Street, you'll come to the Tasting Room Wine Bar. Try a sampling flight. The Pink Door is a nicer Italian restaurant which also has an outside patio, nighttime music, and even cabaret shows on some days, but it's kind of secret. There's no sign and only a nondescript pink door on the alley. Next, you'll come to Kells, which is an Irish bar. Then White Horse Tavern, it's a British pub. Then Cafe Campagne, it's a French restaurant. Then you'll cross the street and come to Rachel's Ginger Beer. It's not really a beer, but they're famous for some type of ginger drink. Actually, we thought this place was pretty impressive because they have Dole Pineapple Whip, which you could almost never get outside of Hawaii. Okay, we have Rachel's Ginger Beer Place, and they're famous for their ginger beer here, but today we got the yes, Dole Whip. Right. So it's just like they're in Hawaii. Pasta Place with a little outdoor patio is next. It's nothing special, but they do have that outdoor patio area along the alley. That's pretty cool. And then Pike Place Chowder. It's only a takeout place, but it seems to always have a long line, and it was voted the best chowder in America. And then this line here is going to Pike Place Chowder. The chowder here is voted the best in Seattle. Actually, the best in the U.S., according to Yelp, I believe. So, hence the line. Somewhere off hidden on a side alley is Shug's Soda Fountain and Ice Cream. Also a cool place to check out. After wandering around Post Alley and the rest of the market all day, you will surely be stuffed with food and filled with memories. So for most people, we'd recommend you call it a day at this point. Even the Scottsdale travel chick can only eat so much. But if you still have more time and energy, there's more to explore around the market area, such as Belltown to the north and the harbor front right behind. If you want to learn more about the harbor front, please check out our other Seattle video dedicated to that. Just search Scottsdale Travel Chick, Seattle Harborfront. Well, that's it for our Pike Place Market Tour. Hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up, perhaps a comment, and maybe even consider following us for more informative videos just like this one. Until next time, see you later.